Hello, for this worked example, uh, we've got a 500 pound, pound box sitting on the floor as shown below. Uh, so here we've got the 500 pound box. Uh, we know two things. We know that the static coefficient of friction between this box and the surface it's sitting on is 0.7 and the kinetic coefficient of friction between the box and the surface is 0.6. So we're asked three things about this box. Uh, first of all, if the pulling force is equal to 150 pounds, what is the friction force resisting motion? Uh, second, what is the pulling force required to get the box moving? So how hard would this, or how large would this F pull force need to be to start it moving? And then finally, what is the pulling force required to keep the box moving once we get it moving in the first place? Um, so <clears throat> with all of these, um, we're going to go ahead and look at how we can uh, solve for this. So start with part A. Um, what is the friction force if the pulling force is 150 pounds? Um, to answer that, we need to look at what is the maximum friction force. Is this object going to start moving already, or is it not moving yet? Um, so to figure that out, we want to draw a free body diagram of our box. So our box is as such. We've got the 500 pound weight force. So that's the weight uh, of the uh, box itself. We're going to have a normal force. And so since we have only two forces, we, don't, we know the box is not going up or down. Uh, the normal force also has to be 500 pounds. Uh, and then we've got the pulling force. And we're going to have a friction force. So FF is going to be opposing the motion, it's going to be opposing the uh, whatever pulling force that would cause sliding in this case. Um, so <clears throat> if F pull is 150 pounds, we need to figure out what is the maximum uh, friction force this can sustain before it starts sliding. Uh, and that FF max, I'm going to call it, is going to be equal to the static coefficient of friction. Let me do this. Okay. Use static times the normal force. And we kind of determined earlier that the normal force is equal and opposite to the weight in this case. It's going to be that 500 pound force. So <clears throat> this is going to be equal to we use static. Uh, again, that was uh, the constant that was given to us. That's 0.7. So it's going to be 0.7 times the normal force, which is 500. And that whole thing ends up being equal to 350 pounds. Now that's the maximum friction force before I start sliding. So what actually happens before that, this box is not going to be sliding. If I pull on it in one direction, uh, the friction doesn't instantly jump up to this 350 pound forces. Uh, it's going to match the pulling force uh, until this point. So if I'm pulling on this, uh, this is for part A. Uh, if the pulling force is 150 pounds and the maximum friction force is 350 pounds, um, the friction force at this point FF is just going to be equal and opposite to the pulling force. So 150 pounds, exactly enough to keep the body from moving at all. So part B is asking, well, what is the pulling force required to get this box moving? If 150 pounds uh, is not going to move it, we're just going to have an equal and opposite friction force. What's the force required to start it up? Uh, and that is this number right here. So for part B, um, our F pull needs to be greater than or equal to uh, the maximum friction force before it'll start moving. So F pull is going to be equal to 350 pounds to start the box moving. And that's just equal to this. It's the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. So for, box, for part C, 
were asked, you know, what is the pulling force required to keep the box moving once I get it moving in the first place? So now I'm pulling, 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 suddenly it slips. Uh, now what do I need to do to keep it moving? Um, and so I'm going to use a similar equation to what I have here. Uh, the friction force maximum, uh, or really when it's kinetic, it's just the friction force, uh, is going to be equal to the kinetic coefficient of friction, so I use the kinetic when there is sliding happening, times the normal force. And so this is going to be 0.6, is the kinetic coefficient of friction, times my normal force is still at 500 pounds. So FF, while this is sliding, is going to be equal to 0.6 times 500, that gives me 300 pounds. And so in order to keep it moving, uh, at least at a constant rate, I'd need a pulling force of at least 300 pounds. So if F pull is 150 pounds, my friction force opposing that is 150 pounds. If in order to get it moving in the first place, I need to pull on it with at least 350 pounds of force, and then once that happens, once I've got it sliding, I can keep it sliding at a constant rate with a 300 pound force. Uh, so with that, we've solved our problem. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.